let's dive into Jalen Brown because what is going on with Jalen Brown? And I just want to set the stage. I think that Jalen Brown has hit the point where he says, okay, I'm an established player now. I was young. I was improving. I was the second star on a team. But now, even if I am still the second star, I am a star in the league. I averaged 27 a game. I was second team All-NBA, multi-time All-Star. I'm about to get the Supermax contract. So he started making these strange comments. You know, after the games, he says, I'm okay here. I, I, don't, I don't love it. You know, I don't hate it. Oh, my relationship with whoever? Yeah, it's all right. Me and Jason, me and Jason, we're okay. And he, he has the weird situation where he cuts his hand on a vase, which I don't believe at all. It, he's been very mercurial lately. And I think that it is such a problem for him. And a season where the Celtics, they made it to the finals last year, which is an achievement. But now they, the expectations were higher than ever before. You've really got to at least make it back to the finals this year for the season not to be a disappointment. And in the biggest series of the season so far, potentially of your career, you've kind of gone missing. And it's a very decisive, important time for Jalen Brown. And it's the wrong time to be missing an action like that. Yeah, because he's trying to get a super max from the Celtics. And I do think all the, the comments we were talking about before is more like a negotiation tactic, right? We've seen guys come out and say, I'm not happy here or, you know, I'm. Like, like I, I look at Fernando, not Fernando Tatis, a man named Chato, right? He was on a deal with Padres for another X amount of years, a good amount of years. And he came out and he was like, I'm not happy with this money. Like guys are getting more, like, I don't know if I'll be here long-term or negotiate and then the Padres get him a deal. Right. So I do think some of those, you got to take a lot of those comments with a grain of salt from all players, just because they are negotiation tactics. If you tell the media something, it blows up and then fans get mad and blah, blah, blah. Uh, but this is a bad time for Jalen Brown to go missing because if Jalen Brown was showing up his usual self, the Celtics probably are 2-2 in this series at least because um, he was, he's was he been terrible down the stretch. And I'm just lack of scoring, just turnovers and stupid mistakes. And I'm, I'm going to – Tatum's done his fair share of those too, but at least he's scoring. And Jalen Brown, I think he's trying so hard to get back into his rhythm that he's really just become a black hole. There's so many instances – I don't know if you saw the screenshot – from game three where there were five heat defenders making a circle around him and he still shot the ball. He had four open teammates and he didn't pass it. And I get the same sort of feeling that I was getting with D'Angelo Russell before he got benched was the ball goes to him. Everybody might as well. You just, just start jogging back down court. It's not coming to you. J Jalen is shooting the ball. It doesn't matter if he got it at half court. It doesn't matter if he got it under the rim. He's putting the ball up somehow. I feel like he's trying so hard and I don't know if it's, personally for him trying to regain his rhythm or maybe he's trying to prove his worth to the front office because he knows he's playing bad I don't know what it is but 23 points five rebounds three assists for playoff averages you can you can get worse certainly I mean that's not awful for a second star but you look around the league Anthony Davis was the second star for the Lakers Jamal Murray is the second star for the Nuggets I mean Kyle Lowry and Bam Adebayo is the second star for the Heat. Their stats aren't as good, but their impact has been a lot greater. For somebody who wants to get that super max deal, you kind of need to be better than he has been. Jalen Brown is not a star in a big market. He's a star in a small market, in my opinion. I think he's a great second star in a big market. And he's been really good, don't get me wrong. But there's no doubt about it for me as a Celtics fan. I think everyone would say this. If it comes down to Jason Tatum with the ball in his hands in the fourth quarter or Jalen Brown with the ball in his fourth quarter i'd rather have jason tatum even a cold jason tatum for three quarters and a really good jalen brown i'd rather have tatum shooting the ball in the fourth quarter yep i agree tanner i'm not necessarily saying that jalen brown is going to get traded but i have created some trade proposals if you would like to uh listen to them and give me your thoughts on them give me a little bit of analysis yeah i don't think he's gonna get traded i do think he'll be a celtic for a long time with jason tatum because this is the best duo in the nba when they're on but sure i'll listen to you grant why not i think they would have to get shellacked in game five for the celtics front office to think about it maybe they revisit it in a year or so and do some sort of sign and trade when that supermax comes into effect but we're going to deal. We're going to cross that bridge when we get there. We, we don't think it's happening anytime soon, but I do think that it's, it's a conversation that's not going to go away. So why not come up with a couple of hypotheticals here? So I've got three for you. I'm going to read them one at a time, obviously. You tell me which ones you like, which ones you don't. Maybe give me your favorites, whatever. So the very first one, and I feel like this is a centered around a somewhat uh, popular theme in these trade rumors. 
the Portland Trail Blazers. So the Boston Celtics would be trading Jalen Brown, Grant Williams, Daniil Gallinari, and a 2025 first round pick to get back Damian Lillard. No further explanation needed on Dame. And then Matisse Teibel, defensive specialist. You can put him in the backcourt with Marcus Smart. Nobody's going to be scoring out of your opponent's defense. Out of the opponent's backcourt, excuse me. Yeah, I like this one a lot. First of all, Grant Williams made shots last night, but I think Grant Williams is a somewhat of a waste of space. I think he thinks he's a lot better than he is. Do you agree with that? I do. And I, I'm not fully sure if it's that sort of Patrick Beverly mentality where he's kind of tricking himself into being that. We've heard P.J. Tucker talk about it, where when you're getting cooked on defense, you have to just convince yourself you're not or else you're going to find your way on the bench. So I don't know if it's one of those, but I, I do think his ego is a little bigger than maybe it should be for someone of his caliber. Yeah, I think the ego is a little too big. So I'm, I'm good giving that up. 2025 first round pick. Give that up. That's fine. Um, just because the Celtics have guys, right? If you got Dame and Jason Tatum together, I don't know how the dynamic would work. Um, because I think I'd personally rather have Dame than Jalen Brown when they're both on. I just think, oh, yeah, of course, yeah, 100%. Lillard doesn't stay as healthy, um, has a few more injuries, but I like this trade a lot as a Celtics fan. I think, it, I think it'd be really, really good. I'd, I'd be very happy about it as long as Lillard could coexist with Tatum. And then obviously Tybal would help on the defensive side of the floor because a lot of times we need defense. We give up 120 points to teams that shouldn't even be scoring a hundred. Yeah. I mean, this would make the, this would make the Celtics the most uh, explosive scoring team as far as superstars. Think about how hot Tatum can get. Think about how hot Lillard can get. And from that alone, not talking about the rest of the team, but just that alone, it's kind of like Steph and KD on the Warriors. It's just two guys that can go absolutely nuclear at any time. By the way, I ran all these trades through the trade machine on ESPN, so it works. It fits the salary cap for everyone, and obviously I approved it myself. So uh, we got all the bases covered. Don't need to worry about any of these not fitting out, not uh, cross checking any boxes. Okay, number two, with the Atlanta Hawks. The Celtics would trade Jalen Brown and Derek White they would get back to Jante Murray, John Collins in a 2026 first. You got to get a first round pick for a little more value, but put it a few years down the line because the Celtics, they're in championship now mode. What does a first round pick really do? You get to Jante Murray. It's another defensive guy, but it's also somebody who can play off the ball. We saw him doing that a lot with Trey Young, or he can orchestrate the offense when Tatum is not on the court. The Celtics, they haven't really had a distributor from most of the past decade. I mean, Isaiah Thomas wasn't a distributor. Marcus Smart is your point guard, but he's not a distributor. You get somebody like that who's a two-way player. John Collins gives you more length at the wing, and Al Horford's getting older. You need somebody who's going to be able to come in and play longer minutes. We've seen the Celtics want to play five out. John Collins would be able to do that. Granted, he's not the best three-point shooter, but he can knock him down when he's open. You give up Jalen Brown. You give up Derek White. Derek White, I think, has had a good postseason or a good season. And I think maybe you'd be a little disappointed to lose him, but you kind of got to just for the sake of this package. I don't love this trade as much. I definitely like the Blazers trade more. I think Murray and Collins obviously add some value. You're going to have to replace Horford in the future, but I would much rather keep Jalen Brown, keep Derek White, and keep my 2026 first-round draft pick um then or no they're getting that so i'd rather keep jalen brown and Derek white instead of getting murray collins in a 2026 first like the first doesn't do as much for me because if i have tatum and i have brown i have veterans who can score um and then i have a great bench player in Derek white slash a guy that can start on any given night and make shots so i don't like this one as much grant okay well here's number three chicago bulls the Chicago Bulls, they most likely want to blow it up. Those are the reports. It seems like maybe they were on the verge of competing for something for a year or so, but Lonzo Ball's injury was a problem, and then the other players are just getting older. It's starting to fray, basically. The DeMar DeRozan, Zach Levine, Nikola Vucevic core, it's coming to its end. So in this package, the, J the Boston Celtics would trade Jalen Brown and Grant Williams, two common themes in these, for DeMar DeRozan, we know about him. He's capable of 30 point per game score is always going to be consistent from that mid range. Lots of playoff experience. Patrick Williams, one of the few iron men in the NBA played all 82 games this season. Versatile three, four, five defender off the bench can give you 10, 12 points a game. And then another 2026 20, first, like I said, you've got to get some sort of compensation. Maybe you go back in for another player. I don't know how much the bulls would be willing to give up. 
I like this one a lot better. I think DeMar DeRozan, when he's healthy, obviously very effective. Kind of like that Jalen Brown type guy will fall right behind Jason Tatum and be fine with it. Williams going to give you help off the bench and then a 2026 round first. I mean, great. If we can get a young guy that can score, that's awesome stuff. With Jalen Brown, I hate to see him go, but I think DeMar DeRozan fills that void pretty well. Uh, and then Grant Williams, get, like, again, I'm not, I, I like Grant Williams. I think he, he provides a spark, but I do think his ego is a little big. Like I would much rather give up Grant Williams than Derek White. So again, I like this trade. If I had to rank them, obviously I think the first one is the best because you're getting Damian Lillard. Second one, uh, I like the, you know, the Bulls. And then third, I would say the Hawks. I would not do the Hawks if I was in the Celtic front office. Yeah, I have the same take as you. I like it in that order. Blazers, I think it's far and away the best. If you're in championship now mode, Tatum is he was fourth in MVP voting. He's a superstar, but as good as he is, you're getting a true bona fide superstar, someone who's done it for a decade plus, Damian Lillard. This is a guy who had 55 points, 10 assists, made 10 threes in a playoff game. Like It's Damian freaking Lillard. It's literally called Dame time at the end of games because of how clutch he is. Yeah, by far. Damian and um, Jason Tatum together, combined with Tybo off the bench, playing a little defense, playing some hard-nosed defense with Marcus Smart. I love that trade. Uh, and it's win-now mode, too, because like you said, if you if you went with the Hawks trade, you're more trying to replace now Horford. Um, but this Blazers trade would be it'd be pretty explosive. It, it would be the Celtics would be heavy favorites to win the NBA Finals, like they already were going into this, or when they got hot this season, I should say.